He was talking about himself. Exactly. Cannon gave birth to Cannon, who then went on to birth more cannons. One cannon blowing up into a virtual armada. Which also explains why this day keeps repeating. I think I get it. But why is Cannon self-reproducing? Same reason a single-celled organism would be. To ensure his survival. If Cannon's a creature of delusion, then he would normally disappear eventually, right? So Cannon's basic nature, as a being of pure delusion, is to strive for... immortality? Cannon knows he's going to disappear someday, so he wishes to turn away from that reality. And towards a reality built from an ideal he can reach for but never quite touch. Which he can only achieve by digging through that tiny gap between reality and fantasy. What in the hell are you guys talking about? They're all things that Cannon said. Oh, okay. Makes sense. S seriously You're just gonna accept that at face value? Argue, damn it! I can't be the only one confused here. Cannon begets Cannon. In a weird sort of way, it really does make sense. So it's true, you think? What I think is we've made a misjudgment here. Or maybe it's just a poor assumption. Huh? We've assumed that we're dealing with a single cannon. But that may not be the case. <sighs> this didn't help. My head hurts. And try to follow along. There will definitely be a test later. So, um, what are you saying exactly? Well, let's look at it this way. Asahi, what did your canon say to you? Um, that delusions are one player only. That they're personal worlds, basically. Okay. And Yamato, do you remember what your canon said to you? Uh, delusions are a pleasure granted only to humans or something like that. That's right. He told us delusions are a form of free entertainment that isn't restricted to any one location. Wait. See what I'm saying? One cannon is not the same as all the other cannons. They're all individuals. What does that mean for us, though? It means the cannons each of us met were all governed by different ideals. There's the cannon who equates delusions with pleasure. The cannon trying to wedge the gap between reality and fantasy. And the cannon who believes delusions are private, personal worlds. So they're all separate entities, then? No hive mind connection or anything, but operating independently? It's the only logical conclusion, based on how different our cannons were. Carefree cannons, stern cannons. If there are ten of them, then all ten are individuals. Okay, and what does all this mean? Well, think about it. What if one of the cannons decides to fight back against the DAB? That would be really nasty for the DAB. Which is why the Bureau's been going on a town-wide cannon hunt. But now imagine if there's a cannon who actually decided to work with them. That would be really, really good for the DAB. And there's no reason to believe a cannon like that couldn't exist. Hmm, I see what you're getting at. Cannon begets cannon. And the delusions keep on spreading forever, which in turn keeps this Sunday repeating forever. A situation which is decidedly very good for the DAB. So, in order to put the kibosh on cannon, it looks like we'll have to expose the DAB's true intentions. Then what are we waiting for? Let's head to the Bureau itself. Do you have any idea what you're saying? Our opponent is a literal state power. Well, what else are we supposed to do? <laughs> You've got a point there. I don't know about the rest of you, but I tore my warning letter to shreds. It's long gone now. I forgot mine at home. Uh, I'm with you guys to the end. Then let's infiltrate the enemy stronghold. All right, I'll lead you there, but just watch yourselves, okay? Where is it, anyway? Clean on the other side of Akihabara.
Um, excuse me, but I, I was wondering if I might trouble you for some advice. Oh, uh, that's sudden, but sure, what's up? Well, you're quite handsome, and I can tell that you're a man of impeccable taste, so... Oh, you've got quite the eye, my friend. I'd be happy to advise the heck out of you. Oh, no, not you. I'm talking about that fellow next to you. Huh? You wouldn't, by any chance, be referring to me? Of course. And I have an urgent matter to discuss. Please, would you lend me your handsome, voluptuous ear? Are my ears not sexy enough? That makes sense. Confessing to a girl is tough enough as it is. And looking sharp while doing so couldn't hurt. Yes, but the fact that the lady in question doesn't seem to share my interests is somewhat worrying. Eh, yeah, you might as well just go for it. YOLO, yo! Seriously, Asahi? Didn't you say you were going to advise the heck out of this guy? Hey. I read in this one magazine that a man's power is in his hair. With the right cut, he can become a real Adonis. Then we better go buy you a wig. They must sell them somewhere in Akiba. All insensitivity aside, that does sound like a good start. Let's see if we can't find you a really nice one. Can you do that for me? Of course. Told you I'd help you out. How can I repay such kindness? We'll worry about that later. Mizuki, what say we take a little jaunt to Soldier Zone on the side streets? 